I somehow have lucked out or drawn all the right cards here to be able to introduce both of the prize winners this evening, and it is now my privilege to do that for my friend, Sony Fauci. I've faced many challenges during my 12 years as NIH director, but as a guy who famously runs over time on all presentations, I'm supposed to share my thoughts about Tony in just a few minutes, really? Okay, I know, you all are kind of thinking, oh, this guy is already taking a lot of our time. I will try to control myself, but I have a few things I want to say. Tony Fauci, legendary expert in infectious diseases, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease since 1984, consummate scientist, wise and compassionate physician, visionary manager of resources, world-class communicator to all audiences. Tony served seven presidents as he led research on HIV, flu, Ebola, Zika, and much more. 20 years ago, he was a major architect of what might be considered the most ambitious and compassionate global program ever mounted across the world, PEPFAR. The pro yeah, that would be a good thing to clap for. Now estimated to have saved well over 20 million lives and counting by providing access to antiretroviral therapy for HIV. But then, of course, beginning in 2020, he was called upon to lead the U.S. research effort to address the COVID-19 pandemic, which is how he and Dr. Corbett are being recognized this evening. We needed vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostic tests. We needed them as soon as humanly possible. Tony became my partner in instituting a 24-7 all-hands-on-deck call to action in January of 2020 to bring the full power of science to bear on this crisis. I got to ride shotgun with a man on a mission. And the world had the extremely good fortune that Tony Fauci was in that driver's seat. Even before the pandemic hit, Tony was world-renowned for his non-stop work ethic. I witnessed him throw that into overdrive. For most of 2020, he and I spoke almost every night. There wasn't much chit-chat. It was scrutinizing data, considering scientific options, finding the right partners to accelerate the work. He was always crisp, clear, and on point. I never ended a call or a meeting with Tony thinking, hmm, I wonder what he meant by that. <laughs> Not his stuff. Throughout our hundreds of hours together, month after month, he never lost sight of the goal to save people from this pandemic, and he never lost his humanity. I believe the results of the COVID-19 research response will be recorded by historians as one of science's finest hours. And especially including the development, testing, and emergency approval of COVID vaccines based on mRNA technology in just 11 months. But Tony had another major job. He was also called upon to be the voice of truth and an advisor to presidents about the pandemic throughout these tumultuous years. An experienced and gifted communicator, Tony was never willing to sugarcoat. He gave it to us straight. And most Americans appreciate that. <laughs> I said most, not all. <laughs> well, on the silly side, we had Fauci bobbleheads and Fauci donuts. <laughs> We all got a laugh out of that, although I'm not sure whether Tony and Christine did. But on the d deeply disturbing side, Tony's role as a truth teller led to attacks by individuals who didn't like the message. Some of them chose to politicize the worst pandemic in more than a century and then sought to demonize a devoted public servant. Sadly, those attacks continue to this day. As a result, this heroic leader and his family require a 24-7 armed security detail for their protection. I trust that history will harshly judge those who indulge in these mean-spirited and unwarranted personal attacks.
Tony's mission is simple. He wants to save lives and alleviate suffering. Despite having been on the world stage for decades and to be so well regarded that Mother Teresa came to visit him, that's true, in other ways, Tony remains just a guy from Brooklyn. His compassion for patients has been legendary over five decades. Going on rounds with him is something the trainees absolutely never forget. Whether it's vasculitis, HIV, H1N1, Ebola, Zika, COVID-19, his focus has always been on the person and how to make them better. So a final note. When I would describe what I did as NIH director for 12 years to someone who was trying to grasp the range of responsibilities, there was always one item that captured the listener's imagination. Uh, let's see, you oversee 27 institutes? Uh -huh. A budget of $45 billion? Oh, that's nice. Projects on cancer, Alzheimer's disease, sickle cell, many others. Uh huh. But, but wait, what? You were Tony Fauci's boss? That's always the one. <laughs> well, there's only one Tony. I am enormously grateful for calling my friend and colleague, honored to have the chance to introduce him to you tonight on the occasion of his co-receipt of the Fulbright Prize. Congratulations, Tony Fauci. <laughs>